Do carbohydrates make you fat? Fat. Is sugar the cause of the obesity epidemic? Check out this video about the carbohydrate incident hypothesis of obesity and whether it's true or not. The obesity epidemic can be easily thought to be caused by the calories in versus calories out model. Calories determine energy balance, but the way those calories affect the end result is determined by many other variables. Everything is a matter of context. The idea of eat less and move more doesn't hold true if you put it to serious tests. The body can use the same amount of calories from different foods in a completely different way. A few decades ago, everything was blamed on fat. But over the past few years, there have been many who blame it on the carbohydrates and insulin instead. Insulin is a storage hormone that directs nutrients into cells and promotes anabolic growth. When insulin is elevated, you're more prone to storing the food you eat as either muscle glycogen or fat. Patients who are underweight tend to be given additional glucose and insulin injections to fatten them up to a healthy range. Type 1 diabetics who take insulin more often will gain more weight. Intensive injections of insulin several times a day make diabetics gain weight quite rapidly. In a study by Henry et al. 1993, they took 14 diabetics and gave them insulin over a 6-month period. The patient's body weight increased an average by 8.7 kilograms, which is 19 pounds, despite eating 300 fewer calories a day. They were eating fewer calories, but because of the higher levels of insulin, they still gained weight. You've got fat. Carbohydrates raise blood sugar, which makes the pancreas release insulin. There's only a certain amount of carbohydrates the body can store as liver and muscle glycogen, about 1,500 to 2,000 calories worth. In most cases, people's glycogen stores are already full, thus that extra glucose causes a spillover effect, which ends up storing those carbs as body fat. Glycogen is the body's fuel used for high-intensity exercise and near-maximum efforts such as sprinting, lifting weights, or hit cardio. People who aren't working out at all simply don't burn that many carbohydrates as they consume from their diet. It's not an issue of carbs making you fat. It's a matter of improper fuel partitioning. This is called the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis, which states that insulin and carbohydrates make you fat. However, if you dig a bit deeper, then you can see that it has its flaws. There are many anthropological examples where people don't gain weight despite eating a high-carb diet. Japan is known for consuming a lot of rice, but their diet doesn't have a lot of extra sugar like other Western countries do. Kitawans are a hunter-gatherer tribe that eat 60 to 70 percent of the calories as carbs, but their serum insulin levels are very low. Equatorial hunter-gatherer tribes eat a lot of fruit and tubers, but they do it seasonally and rarely get fats and carbs together. Professional athletes and bodybuilders eat a high-carb diet to fuel their exercise, but they're far from being obese. Recent reviews of the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis of obesity have falsified this model, suggesting that it's too simplistic. Wait a minute. Obesity as a disease is not just a matter of calories, but it's also a hormonal issue. Fat gain is mostly stimulated by insulin. However, how much insulin is too much depends on the individual and a particular context. Insulin resistance is a condition where the cells don't respond normally to the elevation of insulin and are resistant to picking up glucose, thus causing high blood sugar. Hyperinsulinemia is a condition where there's excess circulating insulin in relation to the amount of blood glucose. It's associated with hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. This is one of the underlying issues that's driving cardiovascular disease and other health disorders. So, what causes hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance? You can predict that processed carbs and sugar do, but also trans fats. Fast food that combines a lot of salt, sugar, and fat with sweetened drinks is a perfect recipe for insulin resistance and overeating because of their high calorie content and palatability. You don't want to ever combine high carb foods with high amounts of fatty acids because it'll not only increase insulin much higher, but also promotes more inflammation, oxidative stress, and metabolic disorders. And diabetes. Low carb diets and fasting have been found to be very effective in lowering insulin and keeping blood sugar stable. They can even reverse insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. The reason why a lot of people find success with a low carb ketogenic diet is because of adherence and compliance. They experience greater levels of satiety, reduced hunger, and no sugar cravings, which is why they're able to stick to it. Hypothetically, you can lose weight with any diet, 
such as the Twinkie diet or the McDonald's diet. But those diets are much harder to stick to because of the hyperpalatable foods. You can experience the same health benefits on a high carb diet as well, such as the guitar ones, as long as there's no processed food that adds extra fats and extra calories. Indigenous low carb high fat societies like the Inuit are also clear from the Western diseases until they come into contact with the processed foods. So it's never just that fats are bad or carbs are bad, it's a matter of combining them all together. Where's the here are a few bullet points that support the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. Carbs raise insulin which shuts down fat burning and promotes fat storage. People tend to eat more carbohydrates than their body needs which leads to a spillover effect. The carbohydrates most people eat are refined and processed which raises their insulin index. We live in a toxic food environment with access to easy consumable food and too many calories. Eating just carbohydrates with little fiber or protein can cause additional hunger and cravings. The biggest mistake that people make is to categorize healthy whole food carbs into the same camp as processed carbs. They're not the same thing and they have different caloric values. Here are a few bullet points that oppose the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. Carbohydrates and glucose can be used to refuel muscle glycogen that gets burnt off during high intensity exercise. Insulin is an anabolic hormone that promotes muscle growth and increased performance. You can still get fat by eating too much fat or protein. Processed ketogenic foods like cookies, nut bars or donuts are still hyper palatable and easy to overconsume. You can be as healthy as well as as sick on any diet, whether that be a low carb keto diet or a high carb vegan diet or a paleo diet. You just have to avoid the biggest diet mistakes. 1. Don't combine fats and carbs. Eating fat with elevated insulin makes the body more prone to storing the food as body fat. It also raises triglycerides and oxidizes cholesterol. 2. Don't be stressed out. Cortisol will still make you gain weight and raise insulin. In fact, eating a keto diet with chronic stress can be as detrimental as eating fast food because you'll oxidize the fats and cholesterol with elevated blood sugar. 3. Avoid inflammation. Whether that be from processed food, charred meat, oxidized oils, trans fats or the advanced glycation end product formation of eating carbs and fats together. Number 4. Avoid processed foods and eat whole foods. Processed food promotes obesity for a reason. It's easier to overconsume it and it's less satiating. Well, this funky thing here ain't over yet. The simple idea that carbs make you fat or eating fat makes you fat are equally as alarming. Whenever you hear someone making these very bold and definitive statements, then you should run. You shouldn't listen to them because you have to dig deeper into the context and understand in what particular situation those foods are consumed by which type of a person, what's their metabolic rate, what kind of a physical activity are they doing, and what kind of other lifestyle stresses they experience, because they all matter. The human body is such a complex thing that explaining it away with a simple calories in versus calories out model discredits the complexity of reality. If you want to learn how these different processes affect your body composition and what kind of diets to follow in what context, then check out my new book, Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay context dependent. Stay empowered.